It's a classic chicken or egg scenario. Did your bad study habits because of your mental health or did your mental health deteriorate because of your bad study habits? Honestly, does it really matter which one came first? The fact is, is that your mental health and your bad study habits are kind of co-creating this awful experience for you. And I'm sure if you're watching this video, you want to do better. Hi, my name is Mallory Grimsey. I'm a mental health therapist and I work a lot with teenagers through a lot of different struggles, including improving their mental health and their study habits hand in hand. You really need to quit these 10 really bad study habits right now. Man, I really wish that I had this list when I was a student. The very first thing that you gotta stop is ignoring your assignments. When you ignore your assignments, I know that feels really great in the moment. You kind of get some time and space. You can focus on your interests, like talking to your friends, watching your TV shows, watching this YouTube channel. Not too mad about that. But the thing is, is that when you ignore your assignments, they don't necessarily go away. They're still there and they'll just keep piling up. So I'd much rather you do instead is to keep a separate list of your your outstanding assignments that are overdue separate from your current assignments. So when you are staying current, it will help you keep that backlog from growing. And when you have the time and energy and space to catch up on some of that backlog, it'll make it a lot easier because that list isn't growing every single time. So don't ignore your assignments, keep current, and this will definitely help. So if you're anything like me, it is hard to concentrate and get going without a cup of coffee. But the thing is, is that if you are drinking coffee late at night to stay up later to do your homework and study, you're actually creating a larger issue for yourself because now you're not gonna be able to sleep and get rest when it's time to sleep. And then you're gonna wake up feeling groggy and tired and not well rested in the morning. That's because coffee has like a pretty long half-life. I highly recommend that if you are going to be needing a little boost of caffeine or stamina, rather than drinking a cup of coffee, do a quick short burst of exercise. Stretch a little bit, pace or walk around, do some jumping jacks. Now, of course, consult with a medical professional. I am not a physician. <laughs> and if you need modifications, that's fine too. Just make sure that you are being safe and considerate of your physical health needs. But the thing is when you can get like some, some energy moving through your body, through some movement, you can get a little boost of adrenaline without the caffeine hangover that coffee gives you. And if you absolutely need coffee late at night, please, please, please switch to decaf um, <laughs> or cut it in half. Uh, do whatever you need to do to decrease the amount of caffeine that you're getting late at night. Trust me, your future self will thank you and you'll feel much more well rested the next day so you're not in that same scenario tomorrow night. Speaking of which, if you are not taking any breaks, knock it off. We are not meant to go, 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 go. Even our phones, our computers, our devices, our technology needs a break from time to time. That's why they have scheduled shutdowns. We have restarts, power up. We literally recharge. <laughs> and we as human beings are the same. We need rest. We need time and energy to restore our time and energy. And the only way to do that is to take a break. So you want to make sure if you are taking a break, there are definitely healthier ways to take breaks. One of which um, that I think is hugely, hugely important and probably really underappreciated is taking a bio break. So when you take a break, this is where you focus on your biological needs and restoring those. Using the bathroom if you need to, getting a glass of water to rehydrate, um, moving around and looking away from the screen or the paper, whatever it is, moving your body. <laughs> having a snack. All of these things are hugely, hugely helpful in addressing your biological needs in that moment. Now, a biological need that I don't often talk about a lot is connection on these breaks. And that's because, you know, it does help to have connections that are healthy and ongoing and supportive. But you wanna make sure if you are using connection um, as a bio break that it's with somebody who is not going to keep you distracted or demotivated. You definitely don't wanna be taking too many breaks. So there's a fine balance here. So taking too many breaks, taking more breaks or more time on breaks than actually studying or doing the work, uh, not super helpful or healthy. If you find that is the case or that is happening, something that you can try instead is to use a timer to limit your breaks. 
I love using Pomodoro. So Pomodoro is a time management productivity strategy where you set a timer and you work very focused on a task for 25 minutes, then you take a five minute break. My breaks, I tend to make the bio breaks because that's what works for me. <laughs> you can definitely do this in whatever way works for you. Um, there's no hard and fast rule that it must be 25 minutes on, five minutes off. When we talk about reaching a flow state or like that zone where you're like, oh my gosh, everything is just like coming to me so easily. The words are just flowing out of me onto the paper, whatever it is that you're doing. And you're just kind of like, yeah, I could like do this forever. Well, maybe not forever, <laughs> but it's not as painful anymore. That's a flow state. And it takes about 20 minutes on average to reach a flow state. So I wouldn't try to do, make your focus session anything less than 20 minutes. You know yourself best, do what works for you. Connection can be distracting, but when you are doing your homework alone in an isolated area, it can be really, really easy to get off task, get off track, or to just overwhelm yourself and kind of get stuck in your own thoughts and feelings. It can feel very lonely, it can feel very isolating, because it is, you are alone, you are isolated if you're doing this alone. Something that you might wanna try, have a study group or a study buddy, or even going someplace where there will be other people studying or working on their homework. Now I know some of the local high schools in my area actually have what's called a homework club where you can actually go after school and work on your homework for however long it is, like an hour or something like that. And you will be amazed about what it does for you when you are, even if you're not working on the same assignments, when you have somebody else or a group of other people around you doing similar things, it really helps to motivate you. It really helps to keep you on track. It's very encouraging because you're like, oh my gosh, if they're doing it, I can do it too. And you can like feed off each other. And if you have a question in the moment, being able to ask for help from somebody who gets it or is there to help can be really helpful too. Also, helping others can help boost our self-esteem and help us solidify our learning as well. It's one of the reasons that I really, really love group therapy. Y'all know that was common if we're talking about connection, right? <laughs> I love group therapy so, so much because it really does amplify and speed up that process of integrating the new skills and mindsets that we talk about in therapy and groups. If you are studying, I know that the phone is a hugely helpful device because you can listen to music, you can Google, things. If you have questions, you can text people for support. However, I would really encourage you to find alternatives for that and um, put your phone away while you are studying. Having your device or your phone nearby is highly distracting. There's been a few times that I have done this challenge myself and have encouraged some of my clients to do this, and that is to keep a distraction journal. Don't actually change anything that you're doing, but start to take notes, like actual write down notes, of the thing that distracts you from focusing on whatever task or assignment or whatever it is that you're trying to do, and then start to tally how many times it happens. The thing that comes up over and over and over again as a top distraction is literally picking up your phone to check and see whatever. <laughs> Sometimes you don't, you're not even checking, you haven't even gotten a notification or anything, maybe it's on silent, and you're literally just picking it up out of habit and looking. That right there is super distracting. Taking your phone and turning it off or putting it in another location, I will personally sometimes actually put it in another room, in another drawer, until I'm done with a certain task and I'll use something else for a timer. One thing that I found really helpful is actually using the microwave for a timer. So you can get creative here. You absolutely need a plan. If you just say, okay, I'm just gonna start without a plan and you just sit down and go, uh, <laughs> one, you're gonna get very overwhelmed very fast because you're gonna lose track of, did I do that yet? Oh wait, I forgot I need to do this. You're gonna be task switching very often, which can be hugely distracting and not very useful or helpful. Um, so taking the time to start with a plan is gonna be really, really important. I talk a little bit more in depth about how to make a plan on getting caught up in school without ruining your mental mental health in this video. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put it. So there or there. Now making a plan is only part of the journey. If you start working in a dirty cluttered workspace, uh, that's going to be visibly distracting and it's going to take some of your processing and mental energy because even though you're not working on whatever the cluttered dirtiness is around you, whether it's like that pile of laundry, um, another stack of notebooks that you have to review, whatever it is, um, art projects, get it out of the way. Out of sight, out of mind. Not totally out of mind because 
because you will have to address that, of course, but during your study session. So taking the time to clear and declutter your workspace and only put the things that you will need for this particular study session or focus session will be helpful and useful in getting it done and not overwhelming you and getting you depressed or anxious or overwhelmed. Speaking of which, overthinking is definitely a bad study habit that you've gotta quit. Overthinking is not super, super easy to turn off necessarily if it's something that you struggle with, especially if it's part of a larger, more in-depth clinical diagnosis like generalized anxiety disorder. Please do not diagnose yourself from this video. Y'all know how I feel about that. Whatever it is, overthinking the process is probably just going to keep you stuck. It does bring up more of an anxiety state of mind. And so your nervous system starts to act and react to that a little bit more. And so when that happens, you enter into that fight, flight, or freeze mode, all three of which are not helpful when you just got to get it done. So if you find yourself overcomplicating or overthinking something, literally pause, take a breath, reset, do whatever you need to, to reset your energy myself, I love to shake it out. So literally, <sighs> <laughs> whatever it is that you need to reset and refocus, it could literally be getting up, turning around, sitting back down again. Do whatever you need to, to actively reset your mindset. And if you find yourself thinking or overthinking the process too, too much, think about the bare minimum. What is the bare minimum that you need to do in order to accomplish this assignment or this task? So bare minimum would be like literally following the directions and turning it in. Bare minimum might even just be like putting your name on it. <laughs> so start with the bare minimum and try not to overcomplicate it. You do not need it to be perfect right out the gate. If you just get the bare minimum done and you have time left over, go back and revamp it. Definitely start with simplifying it, don't overcomplicate the process. If you are finding a lot of struggles with that, working with a mental health therapist can be really useful and helpful because we can kind of help navigate and help you integrate healthier habits while processing some of those negative thinking patterns that have kind of been feeding themselves to create the state of mind. Definitely not like a one session and you're done sort of a thing usually. Definitely give it some time, stay curious, be kind to yourself. Please, 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 Stop putting too much pressure on yourself. This society, we really like overemphasize productivity and perfection, both of which are not realistic or healthy. You are not a robot or a machine. You are a human being. And as a human being, you are going to have ups, you're gonna have downs. You're gonna have periods where you are in that flow state and just killing it. And you're gonna have periods where like everything is foggy and groggy. You're gonna have periods in between. Have some self-compassion for yourself. Stay kind to yourself. Stay kind to others and take the pressure off. Focus on what you need to do right here, right now to make everything else more easier and manageable. You don't have to do everything all at once and you don't have to do everything 100%. That's just not realistic. One of the ways that you can really practice taking off some of that pressure is by taking care of your self-care needs. In my self-care bundle, it is a free program that you can access. It is an online collection of curated resources. All of them are free. They probably won't be free forever. So if you want free access, get a know. Click the link in the description. We've got a ton of different self-care practices that you can use in there. We try to make it fun. We've got self-care bingo. We've got how to control your morning anxiety with positive affirmations. We've got creating a calm, safe space. Lots of different self-care practices that you can implement right now to help take that pressure off yourself as you're building up your healthier study habits. And definitely let us know in the comments. What bad study habit are you going to break first? Thanks for watching.